Good morning, Crawford. Good morning. It's delightful to see the sea of red out there. Happy Pentecost. On the count of three, we will greet our live stream. One, two, three. Hello, live stream. Whether you are here virtually or in person, we are delighted to have you with us on this Pentecost Sunday. If you're on the live stream, Pisha Chen is your host. If you have prayer requests or celebrations to share with the congregation, please put them into the chat, and Pisha will get them to Laura this morning. Stacy's away this weekend, um, and Laura will get them to me to be read here. If you are in, here in person, there are prayer request cards in the pews for you to write down whatever you would like to share with the congregation, and uh, you can put those requests on the card and also give them to Laura during the passing of the peace later in the service and she'll deliver them to me. We do have nursery care provided for children under five downstairs. I have made a couple of changes to this morning's bulletin, including the scripture reading and the sermon, <laughs> which you will see when, when we get there. So, Whoever is avoiding worship this morning because we were talking about moving on to perfection, the joke's on you. We're going to do that. <laughs> That's going to move to next week. Um, but today is Pentecost, one of the three great festivals of the Christian year, the day we focus on the coming of the Holy Spirit among us. And so the Spirit is taking the wheel this morning. Uh, including through the person of Pam Reeve, who provided our lovely altar display and just wrote me yesterday and said, so there's a, a presentation in the sanctuary and let me know if it's okay. And of course, it's lovely. So today, I invite you to simply relax and go with the flow uh, as we are in the hands of the Spirit, in the hands of God. using my hands a little bit differently right now. I'm not really a guitar player, but Aiden, my newly two-year-old, likes when I try. <laughs> and sometimes he's the mediator of the Holy Spirit to me, to us. But this is the, my prayer for this morning. Come and fill this place. Come and fill this place.
That works. Good morning. Will you please join me in this morning's call to worship in your bulletin? Get wisdom, get insight. Do not forget, nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her, and she will keep you. Love her, and she will guard you. The beginning of wisdom is this. Get wisdom, and whatever else you get, get insight. Prize her highly, and she will exalt you. She will honor you if you embrace her. She will place on your head a fair garland. She will bestow upon you a beautiful crown. Hear my child and accept my words, that the years of your life may be many. Please remain standing and join us in our first hymn, Many Gifts, One Spirit, number 114. <laughs> Will you please join me in the morning prayer? O oh God, the Holy Spirit, come to us and among us. 
Come as the wind and cleanse us. Come as the fire and burn. Come as the dew and refresh. Convict, convert, and consecrate many hearts and lives to our great good and to thy greater glory. As this we ask for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Today's scripture lesson is from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 13. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind and filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven listening, living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it we hear, each of us, in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamph Pamphylia, Egypt, and parts of Libya beyond, belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. The word of God for the people of God. Our next hymn is in the Black Hymnal, number 2120, Spirit of Gentleness, and invite you to stand in body or in heart as we sing. <laughs>
You may be seated. So my sermon on Wesley's concept of moving on to perfection is still itself moving on to perfection. <laughs> and I have moved it to next week. That happened in large part because the parsonage is also moving on to perfection. And this past week it hit a rough spot in that bumpy ride. Electricians were scheduled to spend two full days, Monday and Tuesday, trying to get to the bottom of an issue with the overhead lights in my bedroom that have had me in the literal dark since last November. As they took down the light connected to the wall switch and discovered old dried out wires with no grounding, leading not just to that one light, but to other lights and outlets in every room on the second floor, the bigger picture began to emerge. They would have to run new wiring from the basement up through the inside walls to the second story into the ceiling and then back down to the different rooms from there. And so the drills and the saws and the wire pulls began. On every floor from the basement on up, there are holes in walls and ceilings. The access to the space above the second floor ceiling is, of course, through a hole in the ceiling in the closet in my upstairs office. So I emptied that closet to give them access. An outlet in my office needed to be replaced, so printers and scanners and a lateral file had to be moved, making my desk inaccessible. Late on Tuesday morning, the lead electrician was walking down the upstairs hall from one problematic spot to another and stopped in his tracks. What's that smell, he said. It was the light at the top of the stairs and the wires above it were melting and the area around it turning black. He quickly shut off the light as it crackled and popped and took the light down. The wires were charred as was a growing area of ceiling around them. He took the LED lights out of the fixture and the metal base of the lights was too hot to touch. Perhaps knowing that today was Pentecost, the light had been in the process of catching fire. <laughs> <laughs> that hall light was not on the original problem circuit in my bedroom, and the literal meltdown there reoriented the day's activity to taking all of that out, including a chunk of the ceiling around the old fixture and installing other lighting in the upstairs hall. The two-day job ended up lasting all week from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. each day as fixing a problem in one place then caused previously working things on other circuits on multiple floors to shut down. The power tools were constant, frequently roaring directly above my head as they worked in the ceiling above me. My air purifier worked overtime at night to get rid of the sawdust in the air, at least on the nights it was safe to plug it in. Since they had a lot of work in the stairwell, some days I was trapped on the second floor and some days on the first. My cat Mischief quit eating, and I tried to shake off that feeling you get when you have a near miss that almost costs you your life. What if the hall light, which my brother has called the haunted hotel light for being fine one minute and flickering dimly the next, what if it had decided to catch fire the night before or the night after instead of at a time when a licensed electrician was literally walking under it. The job is not yet finished, as it becomes obvious that every light and outlet on the second floor has to be checked and hardwired smoke, fire, and carbon monoxide alarms need to be installed. The electricians will be back again tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. and probably other days. But I go into last week's travails for two reasons. First, I have no idea what the bill for all that work is going to be, especially since it began in April and it's not yet over. But I do know that while our regular operating and programmatic budget is in good shape, our capital funds are already depleted, including money from a loan of $150,000 that we took a year ago to cover long overdue maintenance projects a list that did not include keeping the pastor from turning into a toasted marshmallow. So if you are able, 
uh, special contributions designated for parsonage upgrades would be most welcomed at this time. But I also share the severe disruption of the past week to explain that helping the parsonage move on to perfection is what kept the sermon from moving on to perfection. And as that problem became clear, I met with James on Thursday to tell him that just like at the original festival of Pentecost described in Acts 2, a gathering for one purpose, in that case, the Jewish festival celebrating the giving of the law of Moses to Mount, on Mount Sinai, would need to be given over to the Holy Spirit to direct it toward a different purpose. There are not words to describe the relief of having a person of James' creativity and talent as a collaborator in worship preparation. As we talked about ways that we might provide space for the spirit to move in lieu of the planned sermon this morning, James suggested a meditative instrumental piece. And that reminded me that while the Holy Spirit is often thought of as a source of immense power and a wise counselor in disputes, another equally important role of the spirit is that of comforter. After a week of intense noise, disruption, and a close confrontation with my own mortality, a comforting Pentecost sounded pretty good to me. When James told me the name of the piece, Spiegel im Spiegel, I recognized it as something that had captivated me when I first heard it years ago. But I didn't know the history of the piece, or more importantly, the history of its famed composer, Arvo Pert. James is gonna come and share some of that history with you. Then after James shares, he and Jenny will play the piece, followed immediately by the choir anthem, and then I will have a few words before we pass the piece. When the music starts, I invite you to get comfortable, close your eyes if you will, or if you want to focus on the beautiful altar flowers, and open yourself to the descent of the dove the comforter, mediated through gentle music to soothe whatever frustrations, disruptions, and life noise are disrupting your soul right now. James, will you come? So yes, we'll be playing a piece, Spiegel im Spiegel by Arvo Pert. And it's one hope that it will very self, um, in a self-aware way, the notes will just make a difference for you, will speak to you. But I also hope that it'll be mediator the way it was for the composer of Pert in his life at the time. I'm used to giving 90 minute music history lectures. I'm not going to do that. This is a, a two minute um, intro. Arvo Pert was born in Estonia in the and the 30s, 1930s, and was first a gifted modern atonal composer. He wrote a lot of very intense, complex pieces. If you imagine having orchestra play every possible note at the same time, very vigorously, that's the kind of music he would compose for the first half of his career. Uh, that serves a particular kind of purpose, but after a, a half a career doing that kind of music, he fell into a deep depression. His music was banned by his own government and by a lot of Europe, and he didn't know what to do with his life. And then he, after a couple of years, after not, not composing, he turned to study ancient choral music from the early church, from the 5th, 6th, and 7th century, some of the original chant, and how that developed into uh, very simple modes of meditation rather than music to be complex for complexity's sake. It's by studying this music from the early church, relatively, relatively close to the Pentecost compared to where we are chronologically, that he felt the spirit visit him. He felt spiritually transformed and he became uh, what's now known as a mystic, mystic minimalist composer. And so this piece is one of the first that he composed after that spiritual transformation. And it's quite a turn away from that complex music toward 
a renewing, being renewed by simplicity. And so I just wanted to share that with you so that you could at least resonate with where he was. And I really believe the same spirit can mediate, that mediated in the early church, that renewed our Vauparit is here this morning. At least that's the prayer.
The passage in Acts describing the Holy Spirit coming in rushing wind and tongues of flame is not the only description of the arrival of God's Spirit in the Bible. The descending dove at Jesus' baptism is another, and perhaps my favorite happens with Jesus and his disciples on Easter night, as described in John's Gospel, chapter 20, verses 21 and 22. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Abba God has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. That's it. Sharing peace and with it, the understanding that there is a shared spirit that flows between the divine and the human, between the immortal and the mortal, between all living things and the source of that life. It is the flow of peace which is passed among us just by breathing together, accepting our common source, our common work, and our common nature as an acceptable habitat for God's spirit. That's why we pass the peace as part of Sunday worship. We have time to chat and catch up with each other at coffee hour, what I like to call our full communion. But in saying to each other, peace be with you in this time, we are echoing Jesus' words as he passed the Holy Spirit to his disciples on Easter night with just a word, with a breath. We're in an age of anger and rancor and fear. We come from many backgrounds and life experiences. We're some days furiously angry, other days despondent, other days joyful and ready to sing from the rooftops. But this is the moment in worship that we put the highs and the lows of our emotions aside and remember that Jesus was called the Prince of Peace and passed on to his disciples the spirit of peace with a simple, gentle breath. So I invite you now, gently with love, to pass that peace one to another, becoming aware of the spirit that moves among us and in us and through us and binds us together across every divide as we do so.
All right. As we start with birthdays, I was just handed a note for a first birthday. Well, not a first birth, the, the birth birthday. It's ground zero uh, for Lorenzo Michael Vadaro, who is Susan Caruso's great grandson and Pete Hobson's great great nephew. Six pounds, 11 ounces, born at 4 a.m. this morning. So congratulations. He just found out about this as Susan came up and said, would you come over here with me to deliver this news? So, um, so <laughs> hooray and happy, happy brand new life to Lorenzo Verdaro. And Larry Fuzzoli's birthday is today, Kate said. Junior, oh, Junior, okay, Larry Frizzoli Jr. birthday today. <laughs> and Kyle Riley's birthday is the 21st. Um, Barbara Simonson uh, on the 24th and Lynn Collins on the 25th. Do we, yeah, Marianne. My oldest grandson, turns 13 tomorrow. Scott turns 13 tomorrow. Uh, Marvin's oldest grandson? Oh, Sandy. Who is? Douglas anniversary. Douglas anniversary. <laughs> Douglas is having a birthday tomorrow. And I'm hearing what I'm about to announce after we sing happy birthday, but we'll sing to them. Pam and Bob Donaldson's anniversary is the 25th also. Uh, so we'll sing, we'll sing happy birthday and it'll count as happy anniversary too. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Other celebrations? You will notice in the pastor's parking spaces, I again have wheels. And that's because on Friday I will be closing on a cottage on a quiet lake in New Hampshire. And it's a very long walk from here to there. <laughs> so that and thank you to George for helping me get to get the car uh, this past week. And so um, that will be a getaway until retirement and then a home in retirement. Um, so I'm pleased about that. And as we have, let's see, I think these are all I think a celebration and a continuing prayer request that Jim Butler is seeing improvement with his back issue and so improving still needs further to go but improvement is always a good thing. Um, and Kate, I think I have this in two places but um, Kate's brother-in-law, Carl Bob, uh, is in the hospital with a brain bleed um, he also has pulmonary fibrosis and leukemia. So keeping, keeping Carl and his wife, uh, Kate's sister Linda, in, uh, in prayer during a scary time. Oh, and Kiyomi's mom is in the hospital with pneumonia. And let's see. Not, a dear friend, Wendy Glennon, who passed away on Wednesday. And Judy Stafford's brother, um, 
Norm, we mentioned him last week. He passed early in this past week. Um, I don't know the date, but there will be a service at their old church in Worthington, Massachusetts. Um, and then they're gonna have a reception on the, on the Cape. He had already reserved the space for his 80th birthday party. And so continue to keep the Stafford family and um, specifically Norm's part of that family in your prayers. I'll leave a time of silent prayer before we go to the Lord's Prayer. Let us <laughs> Kathy. Okay, so, so Kat. For Kathy's sister and her name? Priscilla. Priscilla, um, so knee surgery. Let us pray. Veni Sancti Spiritus, come Holy Spirit. We pray these things in the name of Jesus, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now I invite you to rise in body or in spirit for our sung benediction, sweet, sweet spirit. Uh, words are in your bulletin. If you want the music, it's page 334 in the red hymnal. be seated for a few announcements. So Peter's cookbook has gone into a second printing. If you didn't get one yet, they are free, one per immediate family with the request that if you enjoy it, you make a donation to Crawford's Food Ministries. There are copies over here on the, on the side table, over 200 recipes in it, a labor of love from generations in the Hobson family. The coalition of organizations supporting the Haitian families in Woburn um, has their last training on May 22nd at the Church of the Epiphany. 
in the evening. You can see the flyer in the messenger or contact Neil uh, for more information if you want to be part of that. The drive to bring in the travel size toiletries for the refugees being housed at the airport is ongoing through the end of this month. You can leave your donations in the marked bin in the hallway outside the parlor. Um, the online directory is still still going on if you haven't created your profile there. The, um, there's a link in the messenger to do that. June 9th is the day we're celebrating our graduates. So if you have a loved one who's graduating or has graduated since the celebration last June, get that information to Stacy in the office uh, along with a picture so she can make sure we have everybody on the list. That will be our last Sunday indoors. The day before that, on the 8th, is Porch Fest. So the, that's all of the musical event throughout all of Winchester. And our porch is a venue. So while there will be a private recite, piano recital in the sanctuary that morning, uh, starting, I think it's 12.30 is the first act we have signed up for out uh, under the tent, we'll, you'll get more information about our sacred order of tent keepers as they, <laughs> as they ramp up for this, for this year. So the tent will go up, but don't get confused when you come on the 9th, we're still inside. The tent is up for Porch Fest on the 8th, and then the following week, we'll be out under the tent. Um, June 9th is also the day we'll celebrate two decades of volunteer service from Rosemary Monk in our nursery and the decade of ministry to our children and youth by Jessica Rubenstein on our staff. Uh, if you do know anyone who isn't here any longer and might be able to come to celebrate uh, Jessica, or Rosemary for that matter, she's had longer time for the kids to grow up from the nursery than from the, from the youth group, uh, but please invite them to come on the 9th. Uh, Okay, love to see the, ba the babies grown up, can relate to that. Uh, we are grateful for your financial support. You can give by leaving cash or check in one of the plates on the tables in the front of the back. You can also donate at crawfordmethodist.org slash give or by texting Crawford UMC to 44321. And now, peace be with you. May the Holy Spirit flow from God into each one of us and out through each one of us to everyone we meet for the healing of the world. Amen. I invite you to listen to our postlude and then join us in Gifford Hall for our full communion. <laughs>